Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the uh, to the channel here. This is uh, part four of five for how to airbrush that 72 Plymouth Roadrunner. Uh, and if you haven't already, be sure to leave your comments down below. Uh, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell as well. So as you can see right here, um, I'm just laying down two pieces of clear masking tape uh, just so I can get my, uh, my grill lines referenced. Uh, in between each spring here, I'd wipe that uh, I wiped that clear masking film off so I could clearly see the uh, the previous grill line underneath it. It just gives me a better reference at uh, how far and the distance between uh, the next grill would be. Uh, when I go to the vertical lines, I switched uh, for the pieces of 3M, the green tape, and that's because the vertical lines need to be a bit curved and uh, without cutting the clear masking tape, I'm unable to achieve it. So uh, I can also just line these ones up to those uh, other marks that I have uh, that I marked out from the previous video as well. So after I have the grill, the grill lines uh, labeled in, I'm going to go back in with some white and some black, and I'm just going to do the, some highlighting and shadowing on this section here as well. So this portion here in the video, I just mask off the uh, the grill here, and I've cut out the uh, the headlight bezel pieces here, and I'm just spraying those in there now, just to give them a quick detail up. Um, just you know, just highlighting those with the with the uh, the white and the black again, just to get that shadowing and shading effect. And uh, this is the good thing about that clear masking film is you're able to lay that down over top of anything, uh, find where you want to cut out and cut those pieces out, and you don't have any issues with it. And then peel it back, and you have, you're able to go in. Uh, just like I'm doing here, and I'm just doing some fine touch-ups. As you can see here with all the masking, what I'm doing here is I'm, um, I'm setting down the very, very fine lines uh, that I want to have that are very sharp. Uh, you can do very fine lines with the airbrush, but it ends up very soft, so you don't have those sharp edges on it. So uh, if you're also really good at pulling long, straight lines there too with a very fine paintbrush, you can do this freehanded as well. Um, I'm all right with it. I'm not the best at it. That's why I tape everything off here so I can get those exact, perfect, crisp, uh, small, very, very fine lines that you're seeing here once I've unmasked all those. Uh, just going back in here too in the front part of the, the grill and the upper part of the hood there. Just hitting those once again. I wasn't happy with how they turned out the first time. So I want to go back in and just make sure I had those very nice and crisp as well. So as you can see here in this portion of the video, what I'm doing here is I I'm using my paintbrush and I'm just doing the fine detailing on the uh, the rims here. And uh, my, my airbrush can get in there and I can I can do the detailing with the airbrush as well. But I find uh, when I'm dealing with smaller stuff, I like to get more detail on it. And I'll go for the uh, for the paintbrush when I'm able to control everything a little bit more easier um, when I'm laying stuff down there. So. And it's always good there too, guys. If you have your reference pictures pretty close, you can always go and take a look at your reference photos. And just to double check, make sure that you're putting things where they're supposed to be, um, adding the highlights where they should be. And then as long as you have it close near you, it, it always makes it for a lot, a lot easier to, to take a look and reference what you're doing as well. Um, and this one here, in this case here, uh, compared to the original photo and the photo that I'm doing, I switched up the rims on these. The original photo that I'd have as reference, I believe had something like a, more of a, a rally style kind of rim on it and uh, I wanted to do more like a torque thrust style wheel. So uh, that's what I did here. I just pulled up a different video that kind of had like a torque thrust wheel and it's kind of, it's, it's not the exact angle and everything else like that. So I'm just using it as a quick reference to, uh, to just to figure out how the, uh, the light source would hit that rim and how it would reflect it uh, for a torque thrust style, style wheel as you see me doing in here, right? And like I said, I'll go back in with my, my whites and my blacks and I'll just add the highlights and the shadows and the shading just to get that uh, that effect there as well. And what's cool is once this has been clear coated, uh, because it's that uh, Galaxy uh, gunmetal gray underneath there, uh, you'll, you'll see all that nice metal metallic reflection there as well. So it gives it a really nice appearance once you throw the clear coat over top of this here too.
also as you're gonna see in this section here too so this is the first like airbrush tutorial kind of video I did um, I should probably watch these back but you know what detailing the rim I really don't have a second chance to film this after it's been uh, you know it's been all detailed and I've added all my stuff into it right but after watching this to, to do the editing here uh, I've noticed that the uh, the beak of my hat keeps knocking this video or sorry knocking the camera in and out of focus so uh, you know I'm gonna use this as a reference for the next time I do one of these videos just to position the camera so that this won't happen again uh, I don't think it's happened anywhere else in any of the other videos but this section right here I did notice that uh, the camera kept uh, focusing between the beak of my hat and the uh, the rear rim that I'm trying to detail so um, yeah I apologize for that so any of the future videos like I said I'll learn from my mistakes of doing this and uh, yeah I'll make sure that turns out better in the future so uh, yeah, but uh, as you can see here too, the same thing. I'm going back in and using the, uh, the fine line brush here, the paintbrush, to get in there and uh, do the fine detailing on this rim. And I'm just using the same thing. It's I'm using my whites and my blacks to come up with this. So uh, yeah, in the end, for me, what I, I thought it turned out really good. So um, you know, on to the, to the next step here too. Uh, now most of the fine detailing and stuff like that is done onto the car. So here's where you want to go back with your brush and just do anything else that you think you should touch up, right? Or if there's any lines that you want to make a bit more finer, uh, now's the time to go back in before you add your clear coat and then just add up the fine details if uh, you want to add anything just to pull out extra, extra details and uh, make things, you know, a little bit crisper, cleaner, or add extra highlights and stuff like that, right? And as you can see me here right now, so I'm just going back in and I'm detailing the headlights, detailing the bezels here, uh, just making sure I got those nice, high, the, the nice uh, sharp highlights that you see in my reference uh, picture that I have uh, placed above the car. And you know, I'm just going in, detailing stuff like the hood pins, the hood emblem, um, anything else that I think that needs a little bit of highlighting or has really highlighted spots, um, then I'll get in there with the fine line brush and uh, you know, do all that. You know, same things like here that I'm doing right now, like the, uh, the door handle, the door lock, uh, going back down, doing the turn signals in the front bumper, uh, making those a bit more crisp as well. Same with the turn signal on the side of the fender here too. Uh, you know, just going back in, making sure that I got these uh, very fine detail and uh, lines, you know, all highlighted and, uh, you know, basically just detailed up, right? So it's always a good time, you know, if you go back in, take a look, see if there's anything like I was saying. Um, just like here, for example, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to do the thread marks of the tires here, too. Uh, what's good is once this all dries, it just kind of mellows in there and all blends together. So you don't see that hard definitive edge. Uh, you know, it blends in really nicely. And when you're looking at the picture after it's clear coated, you can then you can see the tire tread marks. Uh, it doesn't stand out until you look at it and do it. Holy wow, you know, hey, there, there's, tread, there's tire tread marks in there, too. That's how detailed everything is. When it's all put together and uh, like I was saying there's the beak of my hat again getting in the you know getting in the camera's way uh, once again you know I hadn't shot like this before I'm trying to uh, place the camera in a way where I can show you know what I'm doing at the same time um, you know th that turned out that happened in this one but oh well I'll learn from that mistake and fix that in the next videos right so going back into this section here so I just quickly uh, taped out so the vehicle has all been clear masked and then I cut out uh, this little stripe that I'm doing which is a 73 stripe. I cut that 73 stripe out, sprayed it white. Uh, here you can see with the 3M tape I've gone back in to do the very very fine pinstripe line that's on the outside of that. Uh, and this is the only way that I find it's possible to get it because that, that line is super super thin. Uh, once you see me peel this uh, masking tape back, this is like a super thin. It's probably the same, same thickness of. Uh, oh, geez, it's uh, you know maybe like a hairbrush or, so, or like a, sorry, like a paintbrush here. Uh, very thin line on that. So uh, once again, back here. Now that I got most of the fine detailing done, I've gone and put that clear mask back over the vehicle. I've cut out everything on the vehicle so I can start spraying, spraying my background colors here now. So on the vehicle, I've already clear masked it, cut off the entire vehicle, and now I'm just, like I said, spraying my, starting to spray my background colors in here. Uh, and something I thought would look really nice on this is a little pink fade into black uh, would really make that car look good for like the highlight colors, right? So just going in there now, 
Uh, I'm just, you know, we're using the airbrush to spray in some pink here for my background color. So now you can see that I'm going back in here uh, with my black and I'm just doing with a black background color here. I'm using the mini jet to spray this here. Uh, it's probably what I would have liked to have done with the pink, but the pink I had very little pink left. So um, looking at it now, I'd like to add a little bit more pink in the background, but I am happy with the way it turned out. Um, and it, did, it does look pretty good here once you see, a, you know, a massive vehicle, everything looks and flows really nicely together with that pink and the black in the background. But I would like to add a little bit more pink, but uh, oh well, next time I do something like this, that's, that's what I'll do, right? So as you can see in this section here, what I'm doing is, uh, this is how I'm transferring the, uh, the Roadrunner image. So I've got a piece of clear mask down and I just put some of that carbon paper over top of it. And I tra transferred the, uh, the Roadrunner image onto that so I can cut the, uh, the Roadrunner image out on that uh, clear transfer tape. So as you can see there, once I had uh, the uh, Roadrunner image uh, all cut out, I sprayed the, uh, the the gray portion of the Roadrunner. Now I'm just going back in and I'm cutting out the, the sections here, but I'm gonna spray purple, right? Uh, which is basically just like the feathers and like the, the top part of the head there too. So I'll spray some purple in there. And uh, once that's done, I'll mask it up again, cut out all this, uh, the sections where I'm gonna be spraying the yellow, uh, yellow and the orange. Now with the reference picture in there, I'll just go in and I'll do some uh, little details of the the eyes and um, just like the black along the, uh, the the top part of the feathers there and top part of the head. Uh, I'll go back in afterwards again um, just to shoot that back with uh, sorry, just to use my fine uh, my fine detail brush to get uh, some better detail in there afterwards. And it's uh, it, it's pretty funny like uh, what. Uh, the, the time I've been airbrushing is I have always had people be, hey, if you can airbrush, you should be doing tattoos. Why aren't you doing tattoos? Uh, and the thing for me with airbrushing, it's always been good where if I make a mistake, like you'll, you'll see here, uh, I'll probably and I go back in here and I redo the black highlight lines and stuff like that because I wasn't happy with them the first time around. Um, this is exactly why I don't do tattoos is if I want to correct something for airbrushing, you can just go back in, put some more paint on it and redo your stuff, right? Tattoos though, when you pretty much lay a line down there, it sits down there permanently, right? So uh, if anyone's wondering who's, who's ever asked me, you know, why I don't do tattoos, then that, that's the reason for it. But um, yeah, same with this thing here, like I was saying, you see me go back in and redo some highlights and fix some areas that I wasn't happy with the first time after I laid them out as well. which is that section right there where I went back in the, with the gray to get some of the, the lines down a bit. So here I taped off two, uh, so I measured these lines out and I taped off two, uh, two sections here. So what I'm gonna do now is I got my white paint and I'm just gonna do some kind of some swirly dust trails here for the Roadrunner. Um, at the end, it looks, it looks really nice whenever it's done there too. And it adds a cool little effect to the Roadrunner uh, emblem here as well. And all I'm doing for those little lines is I'm just keeping them tighter at the base of the Roadrunner and then loosening them up as I get to the left hand side of the panel there too. Throwing my signature on so I can keep track of when I did all this artwork there too. And just see how you've progressed and uh, you know, um, become better artists over the years. It's always nice to have that date on there. And now that I got this, this artwork piece pretty much ready for clear coat, what I want to do is take a second to go over it. Uh, see if there's any lines uh, that I've missed or that I want to crispen up and make sharper or if there's any extra little spots of detail I want to do. So uh, I spent the next hour and I went over it, added some other lines, uh, added some extra detail that I wanted. Uh, once I was done that point here, I uh, took one final look at it now and then now this project's all ready for clear coat and uh, time to throw some clear on it. And so I gave this the first coat of clear here, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, I'll go back in here, I'll sand this down and give it a couple more clear uh, coats of clear just to get rid of those transition lines again so when I do my final wet sand and polish on it, it's going to be a, you know appear nice and flat and uh, you won't even be able to tell all the, uh, any of the transition lines on this at all from where it masked out and sprayed different portions of the vehicle. So here it is guys, the next morning, got the uh, the, the Roadrunner portrait in clear. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do from this point here is I'm going to sand this down and um, then I'm going to re-clear it and then build up another layer of clear. After that second coat of clear, I'm going to wet sand this down with 1500 grit, 2000 grit, 3000 grit. And from that point, I'm going to polish this out to a nice glass reflective image. So what I want to do, uh, like so the reason for me doing that, if you can see here in the tree line, that's why I have it outside, uh, you can see like there's an orange peel reflected, uh, orange peel uh, to this clear coat here too. Um, so I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of some stuff here too. Like if you can see the, like the dust nibs here, I'm going to get rid of those as well. Uh, and I want to get rid of the transition line. So the transition line, there's a white line that you can see here. Uh, if you see that flick up on the tire and go across onto the body line there, uh, there's a transition line. That's the transition lines I'm talking about getting rid of. So what I'll do now is I'll sand this down here with 400 and 600. I'm going to re-clear this. Wet sand that second coat of clear down with 1500 grit, 2000, 3000. I'm going to polish this out to a nice, you know, glass reflective image. Which is what I'm all done. Just to show you that, hey, you know, even if, if all you have the paint is in the, is a garage like what I have here, uh, you're going to be able to get this done here and you'll be able to produce yourself, you know, a nice glass reflective image. So, uh, yeah, let's get to that step and get sanding this. So guys, this is pretty much it for this video here. So what I'll do here, I sanded this back down with uh, 400 grit on a DA. I'm gonna rear clear this and then come back and do the wet sand and polish here tomorrow. And that's just to get rid of those transition lines so it ends up nice and flat. So stay tuned for the next video. It'll be the last in the series.